This tutorial is on how adjustments affect your sales tax reporting. When a debit or credit memo changes the taxable amount on an invoice, Sage BusinessWorks displays information on amounts that were previously allocated to taxable or non-taxable sales. Before you start, we recommend you first review the sales tax report to determine how the taxable and non-taxable sales were previously reported. Then you need to calculate the sales tax to determine how you want to make the correct adjustment with your debit or credit memo. When all or a portion of a credit or debit memo is distributed to sales tax, the message sales tax reporting has changed displays. After closing the adjustment distribution screen, you will want to verify that the taxable and non-taxable sales amount distribution is correct. Let's look at some examples. When I review my sales tax report, I can see invoice 578 to my customer Golden is for $100, and it was not charged sales tax, but should have been. So to correct, a debit memo will need to be posted for the sales tax. To post the debit memo, we go to Accounts Receivable. Transactions, Debit Memos. I'm going to select my customer Golden and my invoice 578. The amount of the sales tax that I need to add is for $5. I now need to select the distribution button so I can zero out the sales adjustment and enter into the sales tax jurisdictions desired. In this example, the $5 will be to the California state tax uh, jurisdiction only. Now that I've distributed the complete $5 of the debit memo, I can now say OK. And I'm now going to get the message that the sales tax reporting has changed. We OK the message, and now we want to check our tax report. Select the tax reporting button to verify the amounts are correct. In our example, we know our sales tax report previously shows the sale as non-taxable and should have been taxable. On this tax reporting screen, we see the taxable has been increased by $100 and the non-taxable decreased by $100. Now debit memos are like a natural positive, so this screen is easily interpreted. We'll say OK to this and post. Now let's review our sales tax report. And now we can see our original invoice in the non-taxable column. After we posted our debit memo, it decreased the non-taxable by the $100 and increased the taxable by $100, adding the $5 of sales tax. We can now see the total for our California sales is $100 of sales, of which zero is non-taxable, $100 is taxable, and the sales tax due is $5. Now, if the invoice was previously charged sales tax and should have been non-taxable, a credit memo will need to be posted to the invoice to credit the sales tax. When we look at our sales tax report, we can see that our customer stands for invoice 581 was billed $250 and we did bill sales tax of $12.50. This was supposed to be non-taxable. So we need to do a credit memo for the $12.50. To post the credit memo, we go to Accounts Receivable, Transactions, Credit Memos. We need to pull up our customer stands, find our invoice, the 581, and enter the $12.50 of sales tax. Now we select the distribution, we zero out the adjustments, and enter it into the sales tax jurisdictions desired. We say OK, and of course get the message that our sales tax reporting has changed. We say OK. When we look at the tax reporting, we can see that the taxable has been increased by $250 and the non-taxable decreased by 
Now remember this was originally taxable and we're trying to make it non-taxable. So this screen can be very confusing. So just remember since a credit memo reduces an invoice balance, a positive number on this screen will be subtracted and a negative number will be added to the taxable and non-taxable fields. It is important to remember that the taxable and non-taxable figures that are shown on this tax reporting screen follow the transaction type. If the transaction is a credit memo, the figure shown for taxable is a natural negative. A positive figure on a credit memo is a reduction posting for a taxable sales. So obviously because of this we do see more issues with credit memo entries because it seems kind of counterintuitive to leave a positive figure in the taxable sale. Sage BusinessWorks presents this screen for informational purposes. In most situations, no changes really need to be made on the screen, but it's very important that you review the tax reporting to make sure that the taxable and non-taxable dollar amounts are correct. I'm going to say OK and go ahead and post my invoice. Now, when I review my sales tax report, we can see that the non-taxable has been increased and the taxable has been decreased. The sales tax was originally the $1,250 and has now been decreased. Bottom line, the total sale was $250, of which $250 is non-taxable, zero is taxable, zero sales tax. Some important notes that I'd like to mention is if no portion of your adjustment, your credit memo or debit memo, is distributed to sales tax, then Sage Business Works will assume that the entire amount is non-taxable. However, if a portion of that adjustment, the credit or debit memo, is distributed to sales tax, then Sage Business Works is going to calculate the taxable sales based on the amount of sales tax that you credited. Let's take a look at an example. Looking at our sales tax report, we have invoice number 579 for our customer stands. The total sale was $250, of which the entire $250 is taxable for sales tax of $12.50. This was a mistake as only $100 of the invoice was to be taxed and $150 should be non-taxable. To correct this, we will do a credit memo for the sales tax for $7.50, which is the original $12.50 charged. Only $5 of sales tax should have been charged, making that difference $7.50. This is the amount of credit we need to apply to the invoice and to the sales tax. We go into our accounts receivable, transactions, credit memos. Pull up our customer stands and select our invoice 579. We'll enter the amount of $7.50 which is the credit that we wish to give for the excess sales tax charged and now we go to the distribution. We're going to zero out the sales adjustments and enter the $7.50 credit into our sales tax jurisdictions desired. We're going to say OK and get the message that our sales tax reporting has changed. Let's now look at the tax reporting. Now remember we were crediting $150 of, sa of taxable sales. So what we see is the $150 is showing in the taxable as a positive and a $150 negative in the non-taxable. Remember credit memos always reduce the amount of the invoice. So this is like a natural positive 
the positive number is going to actually decrease, the negative number is going to increase. Let's go ahead and say OK and we'll post. Now let's take a look at the sales tax report. What we can see is the total sale was $250, of which $150 is non-taxable. Originally, $250 was taxable. We've now reduced that by the $150 and reduced our sales tax due of $7.50. Bottom line, the total sale, $250, of which $150 is non-taxable, $100 is taxable, the sales tax liability is $5. I want to stress the importance of reviewing that tax reporting screen when posting debit and credit memos, especially your credit memos. Remember, the amount of sales tax that you enter, Sage Business Works is going to calculate the taxable and non-taxable based on that sales tax adjustment. And Sage Business Works uses the sales tax rate that you have defined in Maintain Sales Taxes to calculate the amount of non-taxable and taxable that should be adjusted on your sales tax reporting. This concludes our training video. Thank you for joining. Did you know there are many online resources that are available to help you get the most value from your software? Many are accessible 24 hours a day. Please visit and bookmark www.sage.com forward slash resources. Select the country of United States and select the product of Sage Business Works. Here you will find the links to all the resources available for Sage Business Works.